Hi everyone, I am following up after our amazing class yesterday. I really had some good uh, feedback as well as I felt really good about it myself. Um, a couple things I want to follow up on and more specifically on a practice that I do that I encourage you to, to play with and that's uh, the use of a notebook. And what I do is I have a notebook in front of me and a uh, notebook and pen and I go into my meditative practice which means I just go right into my breath. And as I put my attention on my breath, as thoughts come up, I open my eyes and I write the thought and then I close my eyes and I go back in. And what you'll start noticing is as you write what is happening in your mind, it unloads it and it breaks the pattern of looping. Because sometimes, not sometimes, a lot of times we tend to loop. We keep on having the same thought and we can't take it out of our head. When you write it down, it opens up your mind to let it go and then go back to your breath. Now what you're going to start noticing over time is as you have these thoughts or ideas or images and you write them down, you'll start noticing what I call the energetic template of them or the emotional charge. Now remember what we talked about, you're going to feel either or sense a contractive type of energy or an expansive energy, also known as a low-lying fruit or a high-lying fruit. So what's a contractive or a low-lying fruit? Um, I forgot to take out the trash. Oh, I forgot to do this. Oh, I have to tell this person that. Um, or I have to go to the store and get this. Those are low-lying fruit. High-lying fruit is concepts and principles and ideas and possibilities and things that get you excited and, and it shifts the way you feel that gives you a whole new way of looking at things. Those are high-level energy thoughts or emotional thoughts. So after a while, what you'll notice in your meditative practice is that... Um, those low lying fruit, you're not even going to go there. You're going to let it go without even needing to write them down. You're going to disconnect, let it run by you, and you're going to go right back to your breathing. You're going to start to distinguish the expansive versus compressive thoughts. But the initial process is to use a notebook. Always have the notebook in front of you because there'll be times you're going to go, wow, that's an amazing idea. I don't want to let that go. But you got to let it go. So what do you do? You write it down. You can let it go. Now, I want to point out, when we say let it go, as my teacher, Dr. Les Femi, mentioned, uh, talked about and how we got into the alpha state, letting go doesn't mean to give up. Letting go means letting go of this collapsed attention because when you have a collapsed attention, you only see one possibility. When you let go, all of a sudden your lens opens up and when it opens up, you see all the possibilities, number one. And number two, when you go into an open focus state, you go from a sympathetic fight flight response into a parasympathetic restorative response. When that happens, your state changes. And when your state changes, have you ever noticed that when you're feeling good and positive and you're in a place of appreciation instead of expectation, what happens? You see more. You're feeling better. So when how you feel will determine how you focus. So when you feel better in an open focus state, like you're looking at the sunset, your ideas flow. You're not in a stress response. When you're in a stress response, you're collapsed and you're basically looking for the potential threat because that's the way the system is set up. So by letting go doesn't mean you're going to give up. Letting go means letting go of the narrow focus, opening up and allowing you to really see all the possibilities without getting fixated on one. I hope that makes sense. So the second component of the notebook is uh, when you do that, you also start to become aware of all this mental chatter. And as I said earlier, the mental chatter of judgments and comparisons and arguments, arguments, you know, you're arguing with people in your mind. When you start to notice that more and more as you write it down in your notebook, what happens? After a while, you don't even need to write on your notebook. You notice the emotional charge of it, which is contractive and it makes you feel stressful. You let it go. And then you stay with your breath without even needing to open your eyes. Now, how does that work in everyday life? After a while, you get stressed immediately. What do you notice? It's a contractive thought. You're going to let it go and then come back to what you're doing in the present moment. This is the practice. Now, the practice should not mean be staying only in your morning ritual. Because if it is, you know, it's like eating a really healthy breakfast. And then all day long, you're you know eating cheeseburger and fries. So you have to, you have to allow this to continue on in your day and practice but the only way to do this you have to condition it you have to build a ritual and hold to it you can't go in the gym once work out can get in good shape and go okay i'm done i'm in good shape for the rest of my life no you gotta keep doing this make this a ritual um it was a wonderful story that uh our good friend john had talked about in the end of class 
where he came to realize that um, it, he almost he laughed. He laughed at the thought of he didn't need to do that anymore. But the only way he was able to do that was able to create space. And how he created space is the practice that he's doing with the neurofeedback training. So you can do this with meditation. You can do this with prayer. Um, if you're going to work with me, we are going to use this concept uh, as well as many other concepts in the neurofeedback training. The only big difference is in the neurofeedback training, um, you're going to be there for 60 minutes. So I am going to push you just like a trainer. I'm going to push you beyond what you think you can do. But you can't just keep it in the neurofeedback training. So if you do choose to work with me on this, we are going to set up a schedule that you're going to practice outside of the training so that we can push you in the training. But more importantly, you're going to practice it outside using the notebook as we will in the training. So with that said, um, I hope you guys really take this to heart. Uh, speaking of heart, make sure you're practicing that, that, um, that, that practice that we did in the class, the two-minute exercise. And that will give you a new way of looking at things because you're not coming from your head, you're coming from your heart. So please practice. Ask me questions in clinic. Um, if you're going to work with me in neurofeedback, just get ready because we're going to push you beyond what you think you can do. So with that, I, I want to wish you guys a great day and uh, we'll talk soon. Take care.